Hi, in this screencast I'm going to look at how to panelize uh, a board design and that is to take a, a design like this one which is actually quite a small board and um, duplicate it on a page so that you can print it out on a single sheet of acetate or press and peel and do multiple boards in, in one go. So um, if I just change the um, grid here to millimeters and set that to one millimeter there, um, the, the maximum area that uh, EagleCAD light permits us to work with is um, uh, 80 millimeters. Let's see if we can get it up here by uh, by 100. So as you can see, that's 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 quite a large area. So we could get quite a few boards in here. Now this this board is my um, open source drum kits drum pad sensor PCB. Um, if you've been following my article series in Everyday Practical Electronics, you'll uh, you'll know what that is. Now it's quite a small board. It's about 20 uh, 20 odd millimeters by 20 odd. Uh, let me show you a nice feature of Eagle CAD. Um, it's called dimension and I can actually have it if I click there and the second point I click yes change uh, change the layer to dimension it'll actually display for us the um, uh, the distance and I can do the same down here click click so there we are we can see that this board is 22 by 27 millimeters in size so it's quite, it's quite small I'll press ctrl z to get to get rid of those Right, so we're going to um, arrange uh, eight copies of this board in a two by four grid, uh, so that it sits within that 80 by 100 um, area, work area that we've got. And uh, I'm doing this video because, as, uh, as you might expect, creating a panelization um, layer, uh, layout is not obvious. It's not. Uh, it's not terribly straightforward. It's. It's not difficult, and you'll remember it once you've. Once you've been through this tutorial yourself once. So, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to turn on all layers. So let's just click on all, and go OK, and that turns on all the other uh, the other layers such as uh, solder masks, stop layers, and things that we haven't spoken about yet. Okay. Um, and now we have to run a little utility, if I find it here, run ULP, called Panelize. So that's run ULP and Panelize. There we go. If I click Open. So that's halfway through executing that script. And what it's done is it's come down and created a new layer, layer 125, called underscore T names. Oops, I think I meant to do that. Um, and it seems to be generating text, the text C1, D1, D2, JP1, JP2, R1, R2. So it's changing the component uh, number designations or creating on, the, on a new layer component number designations. And you might say, why is that? Well, let's do that. Click OK. See the colors have all changed here. If we were to place multiple copies of this board down on a page, then EagleCAD would automatically try to serialize the component numberings. So as we have D1 and D2 here, if we had a second board here, it would automatically call them D3 and D4. So by changing these component numbers to a different layer, um, EagleCAD will just treat them as uh, ordinary text and so when I duplicate it it will just duplicate it just like it duplicates this um, uh, this text up here that's on the the bottom layer copper so we're now ready to copy it so we're going to run a few steps here which you just must simply um, uh, copy I will run type the command group all and what that does you'll notice everything changes color um, that selects everything and then we come down here and we clip, click the copy button. And that's now copied our board design into the cut and paste buffer. Now, we cannot drop the new copy here because this design 
on of, of this board is linked to the schematic page. The schematic only has one set of the components. So if I try to paste here, EagleCAD would instantly say that the board design and the schematic design are inconsistent and it will get very upset. However, what I can do is I can create a new board page. So I go File and New. And uh, do you want to save this one? Yes. No forward, that's fine. Bingo, here we go. We've got a new page. So if I now go and let me just expand this up a little bit. I can come in here and I can paste. There we go. That's the paste icon. Paste it once. There's our board. Now we've got our origin uh, down here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this once. So I've clicked the right mouse key once there. And I'm going to position this roughly uh, in the bottom corner of the bottom left hand corner of this uh, position. Let's turn the grid on um, with, uh, yeah, we'll leave it on inches for now. Now I'm going to press uh, paste again. And hey presto, I've got another copy of the board. And I can click the right key again to rotate it round. And I'm going to position it. I'm going to leave a little gap there. That's, that's about 0.1 of an inch, which is going to be enough space for me to use my um, bog standard Woody's DIY stroke home base uh, DIY store uh, tile cutter, uh, which is what I use to cut uh, thick printed circuit boards. Uh, you could use a hacksaw, but I've just got fed up with um, working my way through hacksaw blades. Uh, if you do use a hacksaw blade, then feel free to uh, butt these boards up much more closely. Um, perhaps even if I control Z to remove that one, you could, if I can find that command again, there's the paste icon. There's nothing wrong with actually putting them right up like that if you've got a good uh, hacksaw that will go in there. Um, I don't like that technique. I'll, I'll use a, um, a water-assisted tile cutter, so I'm going to leave a reasonable gap for trimming it. Now let's repeat that twice more. And again. Still got gap there. I'm just going to use the mouse wheel to reduce the scale. Move it up there. Keep, keep going. Another one there. And another one there. And another one there. And another one there. And that's it. We are done. Uh, I can come back into the layer um, settings now and go none and just ask it to display the layers that I want to print for my home etching. Bottom, pads, flyers, uh, dimensions and holes, drills and holes, although um, I don't have any that aren't already covered by pads and vires. Let's go OK on that. Did I include dimension? Let me just check that. Dimension, yes I did, good. So it's nice to have the board outline. And I'll press the rat's nest button there. It's not necessary, but it's nice to see exactly what we're going to get. Um, and as I say, that's it. We can now um, we can now simply go File, Print, and I always choose black because you don't want it to come out blue because that won't necessarily be the densest um, ink and therefore um, perhaps not um, uh, block the ultraviolet light as much. Um, I usually run with solid. You don't need to mirror this uh, because we're printing the bottom layer and the rule is bottom layers which look um, negative um, uh, on the computer screen, that's why you can't read this text, they are printed out normally. If you're printing the top layer you would have to mirror it uh, but we don't have to do that. So that's it. If I click OK now and I had a piece of um, uh, photo resist or press and pin in my printer, I will get my nice little panel of, um, of eight boards.
um, and we can we can, so we can save this um, uh, this board design if we want as a kind of a spare file. Um, I, I I generally don't bother. I I, I dyna dynamically create these because it's not terribly long. Now, admittedly, if I was making up a panel of twenty boards, I might be a bit more careful, and and I might preserve this afterwards. But of course, this board um, won't automatically change when I come in and add a new resistor, say. So it's a it's a kind of temporary file. But anyway, that's um that's the end of the tutorial. That's how you create um, panels for home use in Eagle CAD. And thank you very much for listening.